morning, afternoon or evening and welcome to Faction Overview number two. As always, this will cover the troop options, strengths, weaknesses and some suggested strategies. Now, if you're a regular watcher, then you'll probably find this week's choice to be a bit out of left field. But our second instalment is going to be the Morians. So, what is there to say about the Morians? Well, firstly, you can have a lot of them. Where Spartans get a 10% population reduction, the Morians will have a 10% bonus. So a 300 population limit will actually get you 330, and 250 gives you 275. However, don't get too excited by this, as the faction has more than enough weaknesses to make up for their population advantage. But if you want to focus on the positives, this does mean that you can train a lot of female citizens early on, which will help speed up your development, because you don't have to worry about saving space for your army later on. Secondly, when it comes to resources, you're going to want to focus on getting wood and metal. They're one of the civilizations that has barracks that cost only wood, so that means you only have fortresses, towers and temples of your standard buildings that need stone. This means you can probably actually just about get by with the 5000 stone that starts by your CC. So if a map has limited wood or metal, set your traders to get these resources as priority. Thirdly, range is their strength, but also paradoxically it's their weakness. They're the ultimate civilization for archers, and archers have fantastic range but limited attack ratings. However, they have no other range infantry whatsoever. No slingers, no skirmishers, just archers. Even their champions and heroes and siege will only offer more archers. That said, the champion archers are amazing, and the chariot, though it is again an archer, does have significantly improved pierce attack. The only exception you'll get to this archers only rule is your cavalry, which are skirmishers. But the vanilla infantry archers will definitely be your main spam unit. The fourth and final thing to mention about the Morians is they have the greatest variety of elephants out of every single faction. So, as with any army that has elephants, you're going to need plenty of food. And I mean a lot of food. So, as they're the most interesting aspect, let's have a look at the elephant options a little bit more closely and see how they can be used. The Morians have access to three different types of elephant, as well as an elephant hero. And every time you progress to a new phase, a new elephant is made available. The first one that you'll get is a worker, which is my favourite type to be honest. This is given to you at the start as a bonus in much the same way that Britons will get a free dog, only the elephant is much more useful. They have two great uses. Firstly, they're a mobile drop site for resources, including food, and that means you can take them anywhere on the map and have somewhere for your workers to deposit resources. This is excellent for gathering resources that are a long way from your territory early on, and on low wood maps they can also reduce the need to build storehouses. Secondly, they can be used to build although they can't actually initiate a building, so someone else will need to do this for them. But once the foundations are set, a worker elephant can pick up the slack. And as an added bonus, they even do this much more quickly than your citizens would. For example, elephants take 13 seconds or so to complete a house, whereas a person on their own would take 30. The upshot of this is that your citizens can focus on resource gathering early on, while your elephant builds houses, farmsteads and storehouses, etc. And all the time it's doing this, it's still using its ability as a drop site to reduce travel time for your citizens. It's a truly fantastic advantage that Morians have over other factions and can really help speed up your development. When you hit the town phase, a new elephant is made available via the elephant stable and it's, well you guessed it, an elephant archer. Now I'm not overly enamoured with these as they only have the same health as a champion, which is 200, and they have worse attack values and worse armour. They take the same time to produce as cavalry, but having said that, they then move at half the speed and cost twice as much due to their health being double of a horseman. However, I don't want to only focus on the bad things about them. On the plus side, they have the long range that comes with all archers, and they also attack every 0.75 seconds. So to put this in perspective, a regular archer or slinger attacks every second, and skirmishers, whether they be infantry or cavalry, attack every 1.25 seconds. So this is not to be sniffed at. They also have one and three quarters the attack value of, in terms of pierce of a regular archer, which actually makes them slightly better than a slinger in this regard. So if you've used elephants in other factions, then you may also be surprised to hear that unlike war elephants, they only add one to your population rather than three. So if you've successfully transitioned to very high food production early on, then these could potentially be a useful range support for some Malay infantry. That said, I just can't seem to find a place for them in my armies, as I'd prefer either the two skirmisher cav or four infantry archers that are available for the same food. However, if you found a good strategy to have with them, then do let me know, as there's something about them that I really want to like, but at the moment I just can't find a good reason to have them in my army. When you hit the city phase, war elephants arrive, and these are the closest things that Morians have to siege weapons. They have the same crush damage and attack repetition as a standard ram, but they're slightly quicker. 
However, the fact that they have nothing like the Pierce armor that a ram does means they're very susceptible to range units, although they counter this slightly by having enhanced hack armor and almost double the health. That said, I'd much prefer a ram and find them to be a pretty poor substitute, to be honest. In fact, the lack of siege is probably the Morian's greatest weakness, but there is one rather obtuse saving grace here. If you take over an enemy's fortress and they can produce rams, then all of a sudden you can produce rams from that fortress as well. So, if your elephants are attacking a fortress, don't let them get too carried away in terms of knocking it down, as having the ability to produce rams makes the faction massively improved. The opening troops you'll get are spearmen and archers. Now, we've already established that archers have less pierce damage than other range infantry, but their extra long range is 72 metres. So, let's put this in perspective. They have three times the range of a skirmisher, but only 43% of the pierce damage, and they have a 50% greater range than a slinger, but only 63% of the pierce damage. Because of this weakness in attack, getting the range infantry upgrades is pretty important for Morians. And as a final point, they're also marginally slower than both the other types of range units. So what does this all mean? Well, basically, it means that you need a very large group of them, as their arrows aren't really strong enough to kill off a similar size fighting force of Malay troops before those troops get to you, and they'll just hack you to death. However, if you can get an overwhelming force of these, particularly early in the game while your opponent's developing, they can actually prove to be pretty unstoppable. Now your final opening troop is a skirmisher cavalry, and that means if there's plenty of food to hunt, then you're set up for a quick cav rush. And you can actually support these guys with the extra attack range that the archers give. When you get to phase two, it's going to bring you swordsmen. Now one of those is on a horse, and one is on foot. These are both standard, there's nothing special about them, so let's just move on. The Morian's champions are all available from the fortress, although, as with a number of factions, you can spend a thousand metal if you want, and you can get these guys from the barracks. Now, due to the general weakness of your other troops, I personally think it's money well spent, but I can totally see why people would differ from that opinion. But enough of that, who are they? So number one, you've got swordswomen, and yes, you heard that right, they are swordswomen. These have the same stats as other champion sword units, and to be honest, they're gonna to have to make up the bulk of your melee force. Number two, you've got macemen. Now these are a strange unit as they offer large crust damage, which is actually unparalleled outside of siege weapons, but have marginally worse overall stats than your sword champs. Thirdly, you've got a chariot. Now this is only available from the fortress, even if you have the barrack upgrade, and again, it's an archer. This means it has good range, but limited pierce damage. As with elephant archers, I'm not sure that the advantages, in this case their speed, outweigh the additional cost and train time when compared to other troops. For this reason, I'm not a big fan of these. Now number four, well, there is a fourth champ, but we'll come to them a little bit later as they're only available if you get a certain hero. So let's get on to the heroes. The Morian heroes that are available are some of the least interesting and least useful in the whole game. None of them offer an attack bonus, for instance. However, if you're looking for something esoteric, then perhaps they'll float your boat. First up, we have Acharya Chanakya. He offers nothing in terms of attack, but he does act as a healer. Thankfully, he also offers more than this, simply by garrisoning him in a building. Putting him in your blacksmith, fortress or barracks will give you 50% off research time and 20% off the cost of upgrades. So that does make him worthwhile, but it also means you need to leave your upgrades to phase 3 to get the money and time off, and in my experience that can already be too late. Secondly, we've got Chandragupta Maurya. He offers no bonuses whatsoever, he's just an incredibly strong hero. As such, his best use is actually sneaking into opponent's base alone, as he can cause havoc, and as he offers no bonuses to your soldiers, you've lost nothing by doing this. The most interesting thing about him, though, is that you can actually train archers that spawn from him. Now, these archers have the same stats as the famous Athenian archer champs, and so if you can get a large group of these, these can be really powerful due to their fast rate of fire, firing every half a second, even though the pierce damage is actually only marginally better than a standard archer. Therefore, if you can get a group of these supporting your elephant hero, sneak them into your opponent's territory, they can offer a devastating attack. Now, saving the worst for last, we have Ashokya the Great. His bonuses relate to reduced cost of temple upgrades in the main. He does, though, have another strange bonus, which is that once you have him, you can build these pillars. And these pillars give a 20% movement bonus to traders, and they also stop buildings that are within its territory, about 75 metres, from having their loyalty decay. Now I've barely used these as they aren't really what I focused on during 1v1 games. However, I can see that they would be useful if you're on, for example, the two seas map, where you can really get resources flowing between allies. In terms of unique buildings and upgrades, there are only two to go through, so let's have a look at them. 
The first up is available immediately via the barracks, although it's tough to see how you can afford 500 food and wood and 250 metal this early in the game, meaning it's really for later days. Anyway, enough of having a go at it, what does it actually do? Well, it makes your archery range go from excellent to obscene. It adds 10 meters and it enhances their accuracy. Also reduces build time by 20%, which takes an individual archer from 10 to 8 seconds, which is exactly the same as a female citizen. But in order for this, you're going to have to sacrifice 20% of your health. And that means if anyone gets near them, they're basically dead. Still, if you can build an army around 150 of these troops, then this is a great upgrade. The second one is Steelworking, which is available at Phase 3 from the Blacksmith. This gives plus 20% hack for all swordsmen, and women I presume, and macemen, which is well worth the cost of only 200 each of wood and metal. So in summation, the main advantage you're going to get from these is a population bonus, your good array of champion troops, and you do have an excellent range of archers. However, on the downside, you don't get any other ranged troops, as we've already established you wouldn't have any skirmishers or slingers, and that really does make your army quite weak. You also don't get siege, which is a massive loss, because rams and catapults are two of the easiest to use and most devastating weapons in the game. And finally, the heroes aren't great. Acharya Chanak is useful for the upgrades if you can wait long enough, but if you can't, then your best bet is to use the elephant. Just use its strength and power like you would a normal soldier. So, what does this mean for strategy? 1. You're going to need 12 to 14 farms to keep up with the food demand that elephants and champions bring, so make sure you have plenty of women to work them. 2. You're going to need metal for the elephants, upgrades and champions. 3. There are two polar opposite approaches that you can take with Morians, so make a choice of one and try and stick with it as best you can. Now you either attack very quickly with archers and supporting cavalry to kill off your opponent in the early game, or you develop slowly the more turtling approach and you use champions and elephants supported by your archers to overwhelm your opponent later on through sheer weight of numbers. 4. Now this could be said of most factions, but make sure you've got some sword cavalry. This is particularly important for Morians because your army is going to be mostly archer based, and therefore you cannot destroy rams or catapults. These two things could just annihilate your buildings and your soldiers, so these sword cavalry will be incredibly helpful. 5. If you can wait long enough, then use Acharya Chanakya to garrison in your blacksmith for fast and cheap upgrades. This can be very useful in the late game after a lot of fighting. And with that comes the end of our Morians overview. To be honest, I don't really like them that much and I probably won't use them. However, I'll soon be commentating on an excellent match where Borg uses them unbelievably well. So if you keep an eye out for that, it will give you some real good tips on how you can use them well. Anyway, other than that, I hope you found this useful and I look forward to seeing you again soon.